For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Satna to discuss his column titled Rugby World Cup, a one-time aspirant rugby springbok reflects on the significance of the victory part one. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. So now it's not clear whether you are cynical about uh, the Rugby World Cup and the expressions of joy. Well, you know, I think I had to think a lot about it because my first reaction was that people were a bit over the top. But the thing is, it was genuine joy. And one has to acknowledge that the Rugby Springboks created a sense of unity and happiness, even if it was for a short while, but maybe it can be longer. But I was at first a little bit cynical about it because I thought, what are people making out of this? This is going to sort out South Africa's problems. Like someone was quoting me what a philosopher said, and I thought, what, what is this philosopher making out that this is going to create a new nation and things like this? But what I do realize is when Nelson Mandela uh, put on the rugby uh, Springboks jersey in 1995 or whatever it was, I was a little bit unhappy because I was one of these people who didn't agree with all these gestures. But he understood that if you wanted to make a peaceful transition, you had to reach out to everyone. So that I recognize in this, I don't know what it will lead to, and I don't think it will lead to everything that some people suggest, but it's a bit vague, but it's still it's a good thing for people to be in unity. So that's my feeling. Mm, and now, is it correct to say the sport as part of the transition of boys to manhood and also as an expression or, of tough masculinities um, or is that just simply your personal experience, Professor? Well, it's my own reading of my own experience, but it's also what I've come to understand because I've studied gender and I've studied masculinities. And South Africa is one of those countries where we, the culture of masculinity is one where toughness uh, courage manifested in being very muscular, in even hitting women. All sorts of things are part of this tough masculinity. And rugby as a rough, tough sport is, I think, a manifestation of it. Now, when I remember rugby springboks, when I wanted to be a springbok myself, I remember them being giants. But now they are even bigger giants. I mean, if these guys were to touch me with my finger, I would fall over. You know, I was just, I just saw a little bit of it, and really, these guys are big. So I'm not uh, just taking my own personal experience, although it is my experience at the time that when I couldn't play rugby, I thought I was a sissy, and I was, uh, I was playing hockey. And I've heard from other people that have the same experience, and they also sort of, them, sort of themselves. The word used in the Western Cape is morphe, and the word morphe can mean gay, but it also can mean sissy. But it's my personal experience, but it's also part of a culture of toughness and roughness, which I think is not good, but taken with this joy, if it envelops all sorts of other people, it may... Uh, ameliorated. Now, someone like Sia Colisi is obviously a very gentle person. He's not an example of the rough, tough, uh, battering type. And lastly, Professor, you are associating uh, not playing uh, the sports as being regarded, as you've just said, uh, as warranting a stigma, being a sissy or a morphy. Do you think that these are the experiences of others or mainly just your own? Well, you know, the man who edited my article told me, and we didn't know this, that we both went to the same school and we both uh, couldn't play rugby and were consigned to hockey and had the same feelings. So that that's just one case. And in my own family, as I was saying, I heard similar stories about 
you know, my brother, my youngest brother being hauled over by the coach when he tried to play hockey one year, hauled over to the rugby field as if it was the right to remove him from the sport that he chose because rugby is the main sport in most schools. And I think it's sissies who play. I thought I was a sissy, you see, and that was why I used to cry when the doctor wouldn't let me play rugby because I wanted to be like other boys. I wanted to conform, actually. Mm. So, And it's as I say, other people are confirming experiences of their own like that. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. There was political analyst Professor Raymond Satna in conversation with Polity discussing Rugby World Cup a one-time aspirant rugby springbok reflects on the significance of the victory part one.